planning assistant. I would like to also inform everyone that the official proceedings of the planning hearing officer hearing are recorded as part of public record. Public notice. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices which were mailed to property owners and tenants located within 500 feet of the subject property, physically posted on the site in question, and placed in the local newspaper. The hearing will proceed as follows. I'll read the description of the application request. The case planner will make a brief overview of the case, give analysis, and make a recommendation. The applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and interested parties <clears throat> excuse me, will be asked to come forward to speak, again clearly stating both name and address within a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five-minute time limit. The hearing will be closed and the case will be taken under submission or decision may be made. Today we have two cases. Again, these both are conditional use permits. The first one is located at 2839 Honolulu Avenue. And the second one is located at 2418 Honolulu Avenue. The first one at 2839 Honolulu Avenue is a conditional use permit, PCUP 1716244. And the second one at 2418 Honolulu Avenue is conditional use permit case number PCUP 1711522. We will hear the first one at 2839 Honolulu Avenue, Four Seasons Massage. Again, PCUP 1716244, applicant Janelle P. Williams, Williams Land Use Services. The project description is an application for a conditional use permit to allow the continued operation of a massage establishment in a C1 neighborhood commercial zone located at 2839 Honolulu Avenue described as lots 12 through 17, track number 6067, subject to the standards listed in GMC 5.64. I'd like to have first Brad Collin, our case planner for this case, actually for both cases, um, provide a brief description and go over the staff report and make a recommendation. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Toledo. As mentioned, the subject property and project is located at 28339 Honolulu Avenue. It's a conditional use permit to allow the continued operation of a massage establishment. The subject site is located mid block on Honolulu Avenue between La Crescenta Avenue and Glenwood Avenue on the north side of Honolulu Avenue. Existing massage establishment is located within a one-story multi-tenant commercial building located in the western portion of the building and is about 1,175 square feet. The subject tenant is one of seven tenant spaces in the building, which features a mix of retail and personal service uses. Currently, there are 27 parking spaces on site. The subject tenant space is surrounded by commercial uses to the east and west. Multi-family residential uses are located to the north across the alley and south across Honolulu Avenue from the subject property. The multi-family uses to the north are oriented away from the commercial uses along Honolulu Avenue facing Hermosa Avenue and La Crescenta Avenue. The multi-family uses across the street on Honolulu are oriented toward Honolulu Avenue. No major concerns were received from various city divisions or departs, departments. Suggested conditions made by the police department and the city attorney are included in and are attached to the staff report. The subject tenant has been in the building for approximately two years and staff believes that all the findings can be made in a positive way and is recommending approval of the subject conditional use permit subject to the draft conditions that you have before you in the staff report. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, great. And before I um, have the applicant come forward, um, for both cases, since they're both conditional use permits, I'd like to emphasize that under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 <coughs> of the Glendon Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if the four required findings are present. So 
the applicant will discuss the four findings and, and, and um, let us know how, in this case, the, the case meets these four findings. I'd like to have the applicant come forward, Janelle Williams. And Janelle, I just wanted to um, note for the record what the, con the comments received by the city attorney's office. Again, general condition as stated by the um, case planner. Applicant shall com fully comply and shall not violate the provisions of Chapter 5.64 of the Glendon Municipal Code for under massage establishments now in effect or later as amended. And Chapter 10.5 of Division Two of the California Business and Professions Code, Section 4600 through 4621, Massage Therapy Act, or any successor legislation. Full access to the premises must be made available to the City of Glendale representative. And that's not limited to the city. It also includes personnel from Community Development Department, Neighborhood Services, Police, etc. And failure to abide or fully comply with any of these conditions of the CUP would constitute grounds for its revocation. And from the police department, within the last calendar year, there were no calls for police service at this location, and they have general conditions. <clears throat> so with that, Janelle, please. Yes. And we, and we have reviewed those conditions, and they're pretty standard for this industry, so we have no problem okay. with that. Just state your name and now. Just My name is Janelle Williams, 2418 Honolulu <coughs> Avenue in Montrose. And I'm representing uh, Four Season Massage today. Um, the uh, uh, owner is here, Cece and Tony Franco. And I think Tony has something to say a little bit later. He's also a very good Google translator. And that comes in very handy. Um, anyway, so we'll go through the four findings. And how, how will the proposed use be consistent? with the various elements and objectives of the general plan. Well, you may remember way back when that the former use of this property was used as a banquet hall, and it was called the Montrose Collection. There's a lot of history with that. That use was discontinued some time ago, and the property was sold and remodeled to accommodate smaller spaces. And this is one of those seven smaller spaces that Brad was talking about the use is uh, the current use is more more consistent with the objectives of the general plan the land use element recognizes personal service uses as appropriate in this zone personal service land uses such as massage services generally offer a complementary element to surrounding land uses and this operation does meet a community need Massage services are allowed in the C1 neighborhood commercial zone. The site is along a commercial area, Honolulu Avenue, which is classified in that location as a minor thoroughfare in the circulation element. And the existing use is in keeping with all of the pertinent um, elements of the general plan of the city. Now, why will the proposed use and its associated structures and facilities not be detrimental to the public health, safety, general welfare or to the environment. This establishment maintains high professional standards and has not had any detrimental effects to the public health or safety, general welfare of the neighborhood or to the environment. And uh, the police uh, report bears that out. The building was formerly used as an infamous banquet hall but has recently been subdivided into retail and service units, units inside of the Shell building. Parking is existing on site. The area is built out with neighborhood and pedestrian uses throughout the Montrose La Crescenta area. The existing reworked structure and use meet the intent of the zoning ordinance. And we have no reason to expect any detriment to occur with the continued use as a permitted massage establishment. The immediate vicinity of the subject site is developed with a nail salon auto controls, and fitness and exercise space. Nearby is a variety of commercial uses, including retail, automotive, offices, and restaurants. The use meets the zoning ordinance intent of providing a personal service to the community in the commercial neighborhood. It is beneficial and desirable to the public. 
we would agree with continuing jurisdiction over any operation of a personal nature, and we welcome such oversight. We're also regulated by the state of California and have always carried all necessary licenses, certifications, and insurance. Uh, they have recently relocated within the same center uh, due to some water damage. <clears throat> Why will the proposed use and facilities not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of the surrounding property? No changes are proposed to the existing buildings or the parking layout as a result of this application. There are many types of commercial uses in this vicinity and approval of this conditional use permit will not adversely impact any nearby uses on the commercial street, nor will it impede development of any surrounding properties, whether commercial or residential. The massage use is not anticipated to draw major traffic or create any conflicts with existing facilities. And since it's been in business for two years, uh, there's already a track record that it's yeah, there are, there is no impact there. The location is well situated with respect to other facilities and will not impact property values or normal development within the surrounding area. Explain how adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. All structures all parking and streets and utilities are existing and are adequate for the existing establishment. The adequacy of the public infrastructure will not be affected by this application at all. Parking provision is available on the property and does not impact any surrounding neighborhood. The existence of Four Season Massage has not created an impact on traffic patterns in the area, nor has it created any burden on uh, public facilities or the public infrastructure. Um, all of that is already in place and conditions will help ensure that no illegal activities would ever be conducted at the establishment. And I am here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, otherwise, um, the next speaker can come up. Mm, I just wanted to ask, can you provide me the different uses again in that, ten, in that yes. center? Yes. I noticed there was a fitness center. Yeah, there's you mentioned a, a nail salon. Um, yes. And I missed, I think, one or two more, if you there's have them handy. There. Give me a second here. It's a nail salon. Mm hmm Auto controls, which I'm not real sure what that is. Is that retail? Yes. Okay. And a fitness and exercise space. Okay. So with the subject massage, there's four? Are there four businesses in the center? Or yeah, there's a jiu-jitsu okay. salon, I think. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, that's the other one. Did you go over the recommended conditions? Yes. Okay, and do you agree with the recommended yes, conditions? Yes, Including the hours of operation, they 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Yes. Are most of these by appointment only? Yes. And how many employees in the business? At, at most, I think they would have how many people um, working there at any one time? Three maximum, perhaps? Two or three. Okay, I don't have any further questions at this time. Thank you, Janelle. And thank you for going over the findings. If the evidence presented in the application at the hearing meets the required findings, then the hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. And if the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. That is understood. Thank, thank you. you. Let me call up the next speaker, please. Thank you.
Tony Franco. <laughs> Good morning, Helen. My name is Tony Franco, 124 South San Marino Avenue, San Gilbert, California, 91776. Um, I'm with the sister of the owner here, Cece, and I just want to thank you for your consideration in this matter. Had any questions about anything that may arise today? That's why I wanted to fill out a speaker card. Okay. So I'm assuming you're in favor? So I'll mark it down for you? Yes, in okay. favor, yes. It's been a long process for me. It's kind of new to me, so now I learned some things, too. So, And you're the business operator? Um, or with the, the owner's proper- sister. The owner's sister, okay. Yes, she's here. So the uh, operator's, okay, got Yeah, it. and I help her navigate through all the forms, and uh, I found Janelle to help us uh, okay. complete the application. Okay. Yes. Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. Next speaker is Rick Barnes. Good morning. Good morning. This is Rick Barnes, uh, 3720 North Verdugo Road, Glendale, 91208. And I'm here in favor of the uh, policy of having this massage parlor stay in operation and keep moving forward. Uh, I believe that uh, when I'm reading through this, I don't see why there's any objection. And it's been a very well ran operation uh, that I've seen over the years. And I'm hoping that you guys will take it in consideration and move forward positively with uh, approving the lease. I have some other subjects that I'd like to talk about, but there's a wrong place and time about how much cost it is to um, operate uh, this whole process. But anyway, I do hope for a positive on this. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And the last card that I have for this case is Melinda Clark from the Montrose That's Chamber. That's for another case. Okay. She wrote 2839 Honolulu. Okay, then I will change that. In that case, I do not do not have any more speaker cards for this case. So uh, with that, I will take the case under submission and I will render a decision in writing. The next case we have in on our agenda is Location 2418 Honolulu Avenue, Uptown Face and Body Care. Conditional use permit case number PCUP 1711522. Applicant Janelle P. Williams from Williams Land Use Services. And the case planner is Brad Collin. Before I have Brad go into his report, I'd like to just briefly go over any comments received from other city divisions. From PD, within the last calendar year, there were no calls for police service at the location. And general conditions are included. And from our city attorney's office, general conditions, as I stated for the previous case, compliance with um, Glendon Municipal Code under Massage Establishments and Business and Professions Code. Sections 4600 through 4621 of the Massage Therapy Act and any successor legislation. Um, Access to the property shall be made available to the City of Glendale Rep. Um, That's it. Brad? Good morning again, Ms. Toledo. Thank you. Uh, As mentioned, the property is located at 2418 Honolulu Avenue in units D and E. Business name is Uptown Face and Body Care. Um, Conditional use permit to allow the conditional continued operation of a massage establishment within an existing day spa in the CR zone. The subject site is located mid-block on Honolulu Avenue between Las Palmas and Wickham Way and it's located on the south side of Honolulu Avenue. The existing day spa is located at the rear of the building adjacent to the parking lot and as mentioned occupies both unit and D and E which is about 700 square feet on the ground floor. The day spa provides the following services, waxing, facials, skin treatments, as well as massage services. The subject tenant space is one of 11 tenants in the building and it features a mix of retail, service, office, restaurant uses and currently there are 10 parking spaces in the on-site. 
The subject tenant space is surrounded by commercial uses to the north, east, and west. Single-family residential uses are located to the south across the alley from the subject property. These single-family uses are oriented toward the south away from the commercial uses along Honolulu Avenue. Um, a correction to the staff report, the subject business has been in operation for 20 years, not since 2011 since staff mentioned in the report. Uh, as it relates to comments from other departments, you have before you suggested conditions made by both the police department and the city attorney. Staff believes that the four findings for the business can be made in a positive manner and is recommending approval based on the conditions of approval that you have before you. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Collins, just one question. There were no outstanding issues um, None the with code enforcement of. either, correct? I didn't That's see them. Correct. That is correct. Okay, I don't have any further questions. I'd like to have the applicant to come forward again, Janelle Williams. Janelle, state your name and address again for the record. Thank you. Janelle Williams, uh, 2418 Honolulu Avenue in Montrose. Um, very small correction. She's been in business for 21 years. Oh, sorry. Since 1996. I'm very proud to represent this little business in Montrose. Um, uptown is the kind of business any community would be proud of. With 21 years of involvement and good service to her fellow businesses and to the community. And uh, the owner of the business is here, Maria Pasio, along with um, a couple of friends, Melinda Clark with the, with the uh, Montrose Verdugo Chamber and Rick Barnes. Also, the uh, <clears throat> I wanted to give you this. The Montrose Shopping Park Association has written a letter um, in support. I'm going to give you that as well as a menu of services that we have at Uptown Face and Body Care and a, a letter that Maria received from the Montrose Verdugo City Chamber. And we'll go into the findings. <clears throat> Here we go. How will the proposed use be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan? We request approval of a conditional use permit to allow the continuing operation of massage and skin care services establishment, a day spa, known as Uptown Face and Body Care, located in the Montrose Shopping Park. The land use element of the general plan recognizes these personal service uses as appropriate and consistent with the designation. It is well situated in that location. Uptown Face and Body Care was established in 1996 and has provided service to the community continually since then. It also offers a complementary element to its surrounding uses. With the approval of conditional use permit, massage services are allowed in the CR commercial retail zone. The site is along a neighborhood commercial area, Honolulu Avenue, which is classified as a neighborhood street with predominant land use character of community retail services. Regional commercial center in the circulation element of the general plan. In light of the above, the proposed use is in keeping with all of the pertinent elements of the city of Glendale. Now, why will the proposed use and its associated structures and facilities not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or general welfare, or to the environment? This establishment has been in operation since 1996. Without any detrimental effects to the public health or safety, the general welfare of the neighborhood, or to the environment. To the contrary, it has been a real asset to the Montrose Shopping Park. The building was constructed in 1979, and the site has been in continuous multi-tenant use for 38 years, without impact. The area is built out with neighborhood and pedestrian uses to 
throughout the Montrose area, the existing structure and use meet the intent of the zoning ordinance, and we have no reason to expect any detriment to occur after 21 years of excellent professional service to the community with continued use as a permitted day spa offering massage and skin care. The use meets the zoning ordinance intent of providing a personal service to the community in the commercial neighborhood and it's beneficial and desirable to the public. The establishment has received consistently high crowdsourced reviews on websites such as Yelp for the quality of care and professional services provided. We're also regulated by the state of California, carry all necessary licenses, certifications, and insurance. She's an active member of Montrose Shopping Park and an active member of the Montrose Verdugo Chamber of Commerce. Why will the proposed use and facilities not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property? There are many types of commercial uses in this vicinity. An approval of this conditional use permit will not adversely impact any nearby uses on the commercial street, nor will it impede development of any surrounding properties. The massage use is not anticipated to draw major traffic or create any conflicts with existing facilities. Uptown is operated by an on-site owner and by appointment only with very limited walk-ins. At full capacity, there would be three massage therapists and an esthetician on duty. However, most days, there are only one or two staff working. The location is well situated with respect to other facilities and will not impact property values or normal development within the surrounding area. Since the business operates on an appointment basis, there is never a situation where the demand would overwhelm the facility's ability to accommodate them. And explain how adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. All structures, parking, streets, and utilities are existing and are adequate for the existing establishment. The adequacy of the public infrastructure won't be affected at all by this application. Parking is available on the property, in the public lots to the east and also to the north of the subject site, and also along Honolulu in front of the location, and Las Palmas to the west. The existence of uptown face and body care has not created an impact on traffic patterns in the area or created any burden on public facilities or infrastructure. In addition, um, Brad mentioned that there have been no police calls for service within the last year, but in actuality, there have been no police calls for service in the last 21 years. There has never been a concern in that uh, business. So, and she's been in business continuously. So I keep mentioning 21 because I'm asking you to grant her one year for each year she has been an excellent business and contributed with integrity to this city. A long term is appropriate in a proven business such as this and she's been in business for 21 years. We'll give you one year back and we're asking for 20 years on the conditional use permit. We think it's appropriate. And she's take, well supported. I thought you were asking me a question. I'm yes, sorry. go ahead. No, go ahead. Continue. I'm done. Oh, okay. I'm sorry if I cut you off. I thought you were asking me a question okay. as I was writing. So what I understood was um, you're requesting a 20-year yes, as opposed to a five-year Yes, absolutely. Because she's been in business for so long without any any negative detriment to the community, to the residential area. Uh, she's been a real asset and active in the Montrose Shopping Park and in the Montrose Verdugo Chamber of Commerce. And Melinda Clark is here from the chamber. She can attest to that. Uh, she's well supported by other businesses, even competing businesses uh, in the community, and she supports them as well. So we want to encourage small businesses like this. Uh, we're losing our small businesses at an alarming rate. 
and uh, it's getting more and more rare to have one that's been going as long as she has been. And, uh, but um, that's not a, there's a reason for that. And it's because she's, she's a good player. And we want to encourage little businesses like this to stay in our community. And a conditional use permit just to file today costs $5,000. That's not to mention all of the preparation that goes into filing it, plus the massage registration supplements, which are another several hundred dollars after that. So we, um, we want to reward the good ones, and we'll just add, we're asking for 20 years. Okay, and let me ask you a few questions, uh, Janelle. Yeah. You may actually know the answer, even though you don't operate this business. Okay. Um, so based on information submitted, like, for example, their... Um, their schedule of fees for their brochures. So it appears that they don't just limit their services to exclusively to massage. Oh, no. They Not have services for facials. Absolutely. Like mentioned it's a day, it's more, so yes, other it's more types appropriately of categorized treatment. as a day spa. Okay. With all of those skin care services. And the massage services are sort of ancillary to the whole yes i would say so. brand of what they the I services so. that they offer yes. one can say yes what about the hours of operation 10 a.m to 10 p.m seven days a week does that sound reasonable that's more than reasonable we would we don't stay open that late um it would be nice to have the option should we need it Okay. Some client maybe couldn't make it until a little bit later. And then what I gathered from your presentation is, again, appointments only mm -hmm. is how she runs the business. Correct. Um, typically one to two staff or, yeah, that's what I wrote. Yes. One to two staff and then um, three masseuses. Is that what I understood? And one esthetician? Three masseuses, one esthetician, and they, they're not all there at the they're same time. They're not, okay, they that's rotate. what I wanted to clarify. It depends on who's available, you know, for that appointment time. But again, typically just maximum two is more Correct. Or they yeah. Very small business. Operate with. Okay, I don't have any additional questions at this time. Okay. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you very much. And then if it wasn't noted for the record, so the public knows, the two letters that were submitted, one was from Dale F. Dawson, and I'll just read that for the record. It's dated August 8, 2017, from the Montrose Shopping Park Association CUP hearing for Uptown Face and Body Care. The MSPA, again, Montrose Shopping Park Association, wishes to convey its support for long-term members since 1996, Uptown Face and Body Care, with regard to their pending CUP. In 21 years in the MSP, Maria Pasillo's Uptown Face and Body Care has consistently operated lawfully and with integrity, supporting the local community and other competing MSPA businesses as well. We request the City of Glendale grant a long-term extension of the conditional use permit for this business. Sincerely, Dale Dawson. And then we received another from the Montrose Verdua City Chamber of Commerce. I won't read the entire letter, but um, it basically highlights a recognition of their 20th year membership anniversary in the Montrose Verdugo City Chamber of Commerce and recognize this operator for their support on uh, different events that have taken place. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to call the next speaker, and that would be Melinda Clark from the Montrose Chamber. And I don't have any other speaker cards on that case. If anyone else needs to speak or would like to speak, please fill out another speaker card. Okay, we will have our staff get a copy for you. Hi, Melinda Clark, Montrose Chamber, 2424 Honolulu Avenue. Um, again, I just wanted to offer support for a business like this. Um, up in Montrose, it's very difficult for small businesses to, to stay alive in this day and age. 
and to have one that's been there for 20 years is great and to be able to maintain it another two, 20 years would be fantastic. Um, she has been a huge supporter as you see from everything that's done so we're absolutely in favor of it and um, we we're sitting with empty spaces up there we'd hate to see somebody else go away and again as the chamber um, it's very hard on the fees for small businesses um, so please take that into consideration I know that's for another time and place as well but um, especially in the shopping park association where they already pay an assessment so um, thank you and we hope that uh, you approve this okay. thanks thank you Rick, um, in the meantime, while we're retrieving more, or did you get one? Yes, I did. Okay, please complete that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. And are you in favor, opposition, or interested party? Oh, no, I've, I'm absolutely against it. No, I mean, after 21 years, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because I see the amount Rick, of... Rick, just state sure. your name. Oh, and, I'm sorry, and, Rick yeah. Barnes. Uh, real, I'm sorry, Rick Address. Barnes and uh, resident Address. of Glendale and 3720 North Verdugo Road. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's interesting because I do work with tenants in, in getting them to come into the, build, uh, in the city and to take an existing one and sometimes... We look at the amount of paperwork that's necessary and also the cost that that I think it's uh, disingenuous in a certain way that the massage parlors have to pay so much more money in comparison to other cost of businesses coming in and then to have the uh, the five-year period and renew again I think that in this particular case I agree with the 20 years that at least we should have it taken out I think we have enough rules that if, if something goes wrong with this business you guys have enough police enforcement that automatically uh, takes care of some of the other stuff. So the 20 years, I think, Ms. Toledo, is absolutely uh, necessary for long-term planning uh, for any business in the city of Glendale. And there are changes. There, we're doing a lot of changes in the city, as you guys all know. So in my mind, please approve it. Approve it with the 20 years. And I'm going to say that uh, the 10 o'clock, when you think of it, uh, because of my work schedule, uh, we, my wife and I go to massage at about 9 o'clock because that's the only time we can get out after walking our dogs in our business life. So please, uh, that's not a problem either. Thank you so much. And again, Thank you. Appreciate your positive input. Thank you. I do not have any other speaker cards, so is there anyone else in the audience that wants to speak on behalf of this case? Okay. So with that, I will um, take this case under submission and render a decision in writing. So after the hearing, the decision, again, will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice, either by speaking at this meeting or by submitting written responses and have provided their name and mailing address. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Appeals under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within, a 15 day, within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures from Building and Safety Section Permit Services Center located on the same floor of the building. And with that, I will close the public meeting at 10, 11 a.m. on August 19, 2017. I'm sorry. August 9th, 2017. <laughs> I'm ahead of the game. Okay, thank you.